Hey guys, it's Will from Vinyl Appreciation Society. You're watching seven super underrated Nirvana songs, hell yeah. So Nirvana was my favorite band from when I was like 10 or so, when I first got Nevermind, until I was like maybe 14 or 15 and I just started listening to other stuff. And part of the reason, obviously, with Nirvana that, that me as a fan kind of drifted away from them is that they have so little material, basically, right? They had Bleached, uh, or Bleach, rather, Outsets Aside, um, nah, never mind in utero, and then like the live records and the B sides, and that's about it, right? Like, whereas other bands continued to release and they put out tons of stuff, and their sound evolved so much over time. And so, you just like, I listened to those tracks so many times, and I became oversaturated. Now, I'm going back to them, and I decided we're doing this series of songs, super underrated tracks from, or this series of videos, excuse me, super underrated songs from awesome bands. We have to do Nirvana because Nirvana had so many good B sides and demos and unreleased tracks and other stuff like that. So, here we go. We're kicking things off. Number seven on my list of super underrated Nirvana songs is I Hate Myself and Want to Die. This is actually one of the first Nirvana songs I heard or like remember hearing really well. This was on the Beavis and Butthead soundtrack, but not for the movie, for the TV show. And I think it was the lead-off soundtrack on that, and I or the lead-off track. I had that on cassette and used to listen to it all the time. And I remember being really uh, intrigued by that song because at that time I was listening to like Guns N' Roses and like whatever, MC Hammer, or Criss Cross, like what else was big at that time? Like that kind of stuff. And um, and like Run DMC, I think I was into them a little bit when I was young, like the Christmas song that they had. It's Christmas time in Hollis, Queens. Mom's cooking chicken and collard greens. I love that freaking song. I listen to that all the time. So I heard Nirvana and I was like, this is interesting. Who's this band? And I kind of knew who they were from seeing them on MTV and stuff, but not so much. So this track, the title of this track is a joke that Kurt Cobain came, like, kind of came up with to amuse himself because people were constantly asking him how he was doing, right? Because, oh, he's doing drugs and he's got these mental health problems and like he's in this horrible marriage with Courtney Love. And so people would say, Kurt, how are you doing? And he'd say, I hate myself and want to die. So it's just a good song. It's heavy. It's nasty. It has that kind of like incesticide era, like grittiness and nastiness to it. It's a really great track. Uh, recommended. Go check it out. Number six on my list of super underrated Nirvana songs, If You Must. This was recorded, I think, in 1988. So it's like from the Bleach era. And it's just heavy. Like it's heavy and sludgy. And it really, like, it sounds like those songs that are on Bleach. And I think this very easily could have been on that record and as is as strong as the other tracks that are on that record. Um, it's just heavy, dirty, sludgy, fun, catchy. Um, it's got a good chorus. So go check it out. What do we have next? Number five on my list of super underrated Nirvana songs, D7. So this is a cover. This is a Wipers song. And I had this on, I think. So a lot of this stuff has been commercially released now on that. I think it's With the Lights Out is the name of the box set that had like a ton of stuff on it. When I was really into Nirvana, these were all songs I had to buy on bootlegs. So I had the first, I think, five volumes of the Outcesticide series. I know I had one, two, three. I think my brother may have had four. Maybe there wasn't a fifth one. I honestly can't remember. But I definitely had the first four. And so this was on uh, the first, I think, Outsets Aside 1, which was a really, really strong compilation. I honestly, like, one of my favorite. Like, I, re I listened to Outsets Aside 1 more than I listened to um, Incest Aside. And uh, I, I said Outsets Aside earlier when I meant Incest Aside. Anyway. Point being, Outsets Aside and Bleach. I think I listened to this compilation more than I listened to those records and more than the officially released live albums. It's just really good. And so D7 is a song that starts off kind of quiet and then blows up into this like awesome kind of punk bit at the end. It's a pretty short song, but it's really fun. Uh, it's a really good cover. There you go. Number four on my list of super underrated Nirvana songs this is a song that I think was only ever played live. I don't think it was ever properly recorded in the studio. It's called Talk To Me. And it's at the very end of one of the uh, outsets to side compilations. I think it might be four, but I honestly can't remember. Don't quote me on that. And it's just, it's got a really, really great, like big classic Kurt Cobain kind of chorus. And uh, the, I've, you see comments, like if you, if you look it up on YouTube, you'll see comments of people saying like, I can't believe they didn't record this. I can't believe this wasn't on Nevermind. Like this could have been a big single for them. And I'm not going to get into all that conjecture, but it's just a really good song. And that the recording of it that's the most well I don't know how many recordings of it exist, but that, that recording of it that's on the Outsets to Side compilation is really awesome. It has that kind of like classic 90s fan recorded quality to it, but it's 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 pretty decent. You can hear all the instruments pretty well. It's got really booming drums from Dave Grohl. It's just it's an awesome track. I think it's Dave Grohl. It may have been Dale Grover, but I'm pretty sure that Dave Grohl is on that one. Uh, number three on my list of super underrated Nirvana songs is Pen Cap Chew. I almost put this at number two. The only reason I didn't is that it's really short. 
It just has one verse and one chorus, and then it fades out. And if this had been like a full song, like no question, this could have been number two for me or maybe even number one. So this is from the, I think, 87? And uh, yeah, this is recorded in 1987. And it starts with that really sludgy bleach era, like slow Melvin sounding like dun, 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 like chugging type riff. And then it goes into this awesome, like classic Nirvana chorus that's more like punky sounding, like bar chord progression. Um, and then it just fades out with the Melvin style riff again. And so it's a really short song and you just want more because it's so good. But um, there you go. Number three, or that that's number three on my list of super underrated Nirvana songs. Number two, on my list of super underrated Nirvana songs is Curmudgeon. This was recorded in the 90s, I think, either 1990 or 1991-ish, so it would have been around the time that they were recording uh, Nevermind, or slightly before or thereafter. And um, this has, again, it has one of those kind of start-stop riffs where it's like... There's a little pause in the riff, which Dave Grohl always pulls off really, really well in those songs. And the chorus is just... It's just it's heavy... And it's it has that like kind of like awesome kind of like nevermind era Nirvana sound the, the the amazing chemistry that you know so well from Dave Grohl, Chris Novoselic, and Kurt Cobain being in the studio together is all there. And it doesn't have like the super gloss that you have on Nevermind that I think Andy Wallace really contributed that Kurt Cobain himself was kind of upset about after he the the record went from Butch Vig's hands to Andy Wallace's hands. Um, and it's, it's like a, it's a dirty kind of nasty song. I don't mean nasty like it's malicious. It's just like this kind of like gritty, dirty kind of song. And it's awesome. It's called Curmudgeon. Number one super underrated Nirvana song for me is Opinion. So this is an acoustic live song that was recorded, I think, at Evergreen. I wrote it down. Evergreen State College. And it was in. Uh, it was on September 25th of 1990. Kurt Cobain was asked to come into the studio. He did an interview. Obviously, this is before Nevermind came out. So Nirvana at that time was still like an underground kind of like college radio band. And he played this song, Opinion. And so an ex-employee of Geffen Records claims that they recorded this song, Electric. But as far as I know, that version was never released. And there's like a fake electric version, I guess, where they take like his vocals from this version and they somebody just recorded like a lo-fi kind of punk version. I don't exactly know how it worked, but this song is just awesome. And I think that if they had recorded this as a big, like... Nevermind era electric song. This could have been on Nevermind. It could have been a big single. It could have been like a really important Nirvana song that people really, really love. And instead, it's this kind of a obscure acoustic demo that was, or acoustic live track that was recorded on this radio station. Something that's really interesting about this song, which is probably not true, knowing Kurt Cobain, because he liked to like take the piss. But he claims, that, and I don't think this is on. So this song again appears on the With the Lights Out box set. On the Outcesticide version, the bootleg version, there's an interview with Kurt Cobain from that radio session before the song. I don't think that's on the box set. But in the interview, he says that he wrote the song on the way to the radio station and that he just like jotted the lyrics down in the car and had the chord progression in his head. Who knows if that's true? If that's true, that's kind of amazing. But um, the track is Opinion. It's number one on my list of super underrated Nirvana songs. We will probably do more videos for Nirvana because they just had so many awesome songs, especially like live stuff, outtakes, B-sides. Like it took me a couple days going through all those Outsets Aside compilations to, to make this list. So I could definitely do more. My name is Will. Please subscribe if you like this video. Let us know what your favorite Nirvana songs are, what you think the most underrated Nirvana songs are, what other bands you think we should do in this series. This has been Vinyl Appreciation Society. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time. Ha <laughs> ha!